Amen, you guys. Welcome. Happy Father's Day and welcome to Papa Palooza. Let's give it up for all those dads. We're so happy to have you guys here. If you'll see on your trays right there, if you're new or visiting, which some of you are today, or you've never filled out a Connect card with us, we got it right there, and we would love for you to fill that out and just turn it in in the back in one of our giving stations. Now, before you sit down, I want you to turn around and say Happy Father's Day to someone today. All right, you guys can have a seat. Now we got something extra special for you guys today with Papa Palooza that I want to throw at all of the dads out there. This is a little trivia time. I've got Angela, my wonderful assistant out here that will be helping with my help with my ears too, all right? I need the first person, the first dad that responds with the answer to these questions is going to win a gift card to be dubs okay? And these are very difficult questions, all right? These are man questions, all right. So the first one, Angela, help me out. The first one to shout out the answer to this question wins a B-dubs card. Here we go, number one. What team won the Super Bowl last year? Who was that? Yeah, get up there. Get, get up there, Angela. Get up there and give that man a gift card. Sounds easy. This is so easy, right? I'm not making this hard on you. Hurry up, hustle, Angela. Okay, good. All right, second question for a B-dubs gift card. All right, now it's very, very hard. All right, now one, one answer and one answer alone is the correct answer. Do you understand? The, shut up, the first one to, <laughs> no, stop it. The first one to shout out the correct answer wins this, except for that guy up there, because he already won one. Here we go. Choose the better and only option, meat or tofu. That's correct, David Russell, I heard it. Up to the top, living the dream. The b dub stream. Hey, David, you can go ahead and bring me uh, when you use that card. Hey. Okay, thanks, buddy. All right, now we've got one final question. The hardest of all, my friends. The hardest and most complicated man question of all time. This prize is extra special. You will not only get a B-Dubs card, but you will also get a gift card to Miles of Golf, which is an amazing establishment just down the street for all of you golfers. And if you win this prize and do not golf, you could go ahead and hand me that card, okay? Fantastic. Manly men, <laughs> manly men, here we go. For the B-Dubs card and Miles of Golf, listen, the first to shout out this answer, I'm gonna need you, Angelo, listen up. The first to shout out this answer wins this amazing double prize. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Don't mess this up. What is the date of you and your wife's anniversary? I got it over here, 10-2017. Now, who said that? I can't see you. Okay, Joe, can, can your wife, Kelly, um, can she verify that's correct or you just shouted out a random? Okay, she got it. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> that's the man card right there. I love it. Good job. Um, men, we have to remember this. Uh, through writing this out this morning, I re discovered and remembered that my and my wife Rachel's is this Wednesday, our 21st, so we're gonna celebrate. So, uh, do not let me forget, those of you who can text me, do not let me forget, because I'm an idiot and I will. All right, don't mess that up, boys. Happy Father's Day to all you guys. Of course, you saw out front, after the service, we're gonna have hot dogs going out there. We've got some great drinks ready for you, some chips. We've also got a putt-putt challenge right out here that you can do and win movie tickets as well as, listen, being entered for the grand prize of a $50 card to Lowe's. Yeah, Lowe's, baby. All right, so we are excited to have you. Once again, happy Father's Day. We got a lot going on today. Thanks, thanks for taking time, seriously, for coming to North Rock today. We love you guys, we appreciate it. Now, for everything else going on, check out this thing we call North Rock News. Well, hey there everybody and welcome to North Rock Church. We're so excited to have you here today. My name is Michaela, and this is North Rock News where we can get you connected with everything going on around here at North Rock Church. For us, church is so much more than just a Sunday service and we want you to know that there's a place perfect for you here at North Rock Church. One of the best ways that you can get connected with us is by going onto our website at www.northrock.tv and clicking on the button on our main page called Welcome Card. If you fill out your information, we can get some information into your hands about who we are as a church, what we believe, and how we can get you connected. This will also help us learn how we can serve you best, so we would really appreciate it if you'd fill out that information. And again, we just want to thank you for being here today. 
Our core values here at North Rock Church are learning to give, gather, serve, and show. And we want to learn how to do these things by learning to know God personally, by finding freedom in our lives, learning to discover the purpose that God has given us, and finding out how we can make a difference in the world around us. We know that that's a lot of steps, and oftentimes in our faith journeys, we want to know what's the next step that's perfect for us. And here at North Rock Church, we want to help you find that next step. And we've got some great resources to help you out. Since you're already on our website at northrock.tv, you'll see a button on our main page called Next Steps, where you'll see a numerous amount of opportunities that you have readily available to you, like Starting Point, which is a class helping you answer any questions that you might have about life, your faith, or our church in general, or Growth Track, which is a class helping you discover your God-given talents and how you can use them here at North Rock Church or baptism. Baptisms are an outward expression of an internal change and if you want to sign up for our next baptism service you can do that on our website as well. We want to help you discover all God has in store for you here at North Rock Church. This is the part of our service where you can make a difference in the world around you right in your seats with a click of a button by checking in for good. So if you go to your Facebook app and click on the upside down teardrop next to North Rock Church, you can make a difference in the month of June. And this month we're partnering with a nonprofit organization that's going to make a difference all over the world. And if you want some more information, you can check out this video. Thanks for giving, North Rock. Hi everyone, this is Maurice Mucene coming to you from Build Down. We're very excited to partner with all of you this month to provide bricks that helps with our school construction program. Every six check-ins provides a brick that goes towards our school construction efforts. Build Down's mission is to break the cycle of poverty, illiteracy, and low expectations through service and education. Build Down has partnered with these communities to help build over 1,300 schools in Burkina Faso, Haiti, Malawi, Mali, Senegal, Nepal, and Nicaragua. Check-ins this month will go towards our school construction program in Malawi. Please remember to check in and help us build a school. Ziko Mokwamini. That's thank you in Chichewa. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed the service today. My name is Michaela, and this has been North Rock News. I don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You want to borrow the new car? You want to borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, life was easy. Super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ooh, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap offers at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure. Spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow, and you've known about it for four weeks, and you haven't started yet? Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey! Hey! Can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Mmm, <laughs> vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. OK, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple hours? Thanks. Money really does grow on trees. Good morning, church. How are we doing today? Happy Father's Day. Welcome to Papa Palooza. 
North Rock style. We're really glad you're here. <laughs> that video, wow. You know, as a dad, okay. All right, I get it sometimes. I'm a little, I know, whatever. Hey, uh, I just want to say thanks for everybody being here. And um, first off, for all the dads uh, today, I want to say thanks so much for, um, you know, just doing what you do. Because uh, being a father, uh, being, a, being a dad is a very difficult job. And that is for, um, you know, I, I said this on Mother's Day weekend, and I, I feel the same way this weekend. I think that sometimes as a father, maybe you might think that, well, I've already done that. My kids are raised. So you might think you were a father, more of a father in the past. Some fathers are right in the trenches right now, and, and you're a father in the present. And then um, you, you, you've also got the future fathers in the room who uh, are essentially either trying to have kids or potentially maybe even adopting kids in the future. Who knows uh, what that might look like? It might not even be um, either one of those. It might be another way that God calls you to be a father. So I just want to say thanks, first off, to every single one of you. Uh, and I, want to, I hope I have a, a message today that I, I think is going to encourage you um, on this weekend that we're calling Papa Palooza, a weekend that we celebrate Dad. So thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to dive right in just so for the sake of getting done so we can get to those stadium hot dogs that are out there grilling right now and those chips and those Arnold Palmers uh, today and everything else. But, um, you know, kind of jumping right in, um, I, I read a passage this week as I was kind of preparing, I was praying. This is always a hard weekend for me. And if I'm just being honest and transparent as your pastor, it's always a weekend where it's like, man, because uh, you, know, you feel like you're writing a message for yourself. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe I should just find somebody else to speak on Father's Day. And, and this year, um, as I was praying this last week, the Lord really put on my heart a passage of Scripture that I want to share with you that, man, it, it's, it's kind of wrecked me all week, and, and, and it's, um, I, I, I've found great encouragement in it, and I hope that you do too. It's 1 Corinthians 4, 14 through 17. Let me give you a little context, because I love it when your Bible comes to life for you, and you don't, it doesn't just look like words on a page. You start to kind of understand a little bit about what was going on in context. The, the book of Corinthians is basically a letter that a guy named Paul, the apostle, wrote to a church, a group of people just like you and I, in a city called Corinth. And he, he was writing this letter. Um, it, was, it was kind of a corrective letter a little bit, but at the same time, it was all a, a very loving letter. And you'll, you'll hear that in the words that he says here, 1 Corinthians 4, 14 through 17. He starts off by saying this. I'm not writing this to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. And just that first sentence, when I, when I read that this week, I thought, you know, there's so much packed in there on Father's Day. Like, each one of us have had a different experience with this thing called Father. Like, our, our experience. Some of us, um, even in our own lifetime, have had great experiences uh, and, and also very difficult experiences as well. So when we come into a day like today we're, we're, that we're celebrating dads and we're celebrating this relationship with our fathers, um, it, there's, there, I also understand and I'm well aware of myself, as I'll talk about later on, that sometimes that relationship comes with some difficulties too. And, and, and this is what Paul is trying to communicate. He's trying to say, listen, what I'm about to tell you is not to shame you and, and it's not to, like, you know, put you in your place or anything like that. I just, I want to warn you about something as my dear children. Like, I care about you deeply. But I care about you enough that I've got to tell you this. I've got to share this with you because I feel like it's really that important. And he goes on to say, even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. I want to warn you about something. I want to tell you about something. I want, to, I want to share something with you. And I'm not sharing it to shame you. I'm sharing it to warn you and to get you to, to focus on something because you're my dear children and I care about you deeply. Even if you had 10,000 guardians, in other words, you have a lot of people that have input in your life, especially in the world that we live in today, right? I mean, with our cell phones and how how information is accessed today and how information travels. I mean, you can get on the internet any given day and listen to somebody that's going to tell you about following Jesus, who's going to have great insights about your relationship with God and, and how you should live and, and, and self-help pieces. And all of those things are going to be out there and available. You have 10,000 guardians. They're everywhere. But what concerns me is you don't have many fathers. And he kind of dives into this a little further. He says, for, Christ, for, for in Christ Jesus, I, Paul, became your father through the gospel. Like, 
I, I kind of became your, your father through the gospel message, and, and in that, I'm urging you to imitate me, to do things like, like want to be like, like I'm doing. And, and that's, a, that's a tough thing to say because for the most part, Paul was writing these letters from prison. He was writing these letters from a prison cell, um, and he was telling them that this thing called following Jesus is going to be a very difficult thing. Living a life that's admirable, a life that's Christ-like, the kind of life that God wants you to live, it's going to, it's going to be difficult. But I'm telling, you that, I'm telling you this to warn you not to shame you just because I want you to understand you're my dear children. I love you. You don't have many fatherly examples in your life. You have 10,000 people contributing, guardians of your faith that are saying things, but you don't have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I'm urging you to imitate me. He goes on to say, for this reason, I sent you Timothy, my son. In other words, I hung out with Timothy a lot. It's like Timothy wasn't Paul's, it wasn't like his, his actual son. He, he's saying, he's, he's become a son to me in the faith. He hung out with me so much that I trust him dearly to go hang out with you so that you'll know what I represent and ultimately what Jesus represents is what Paul's trying to communicate to the church. He said, my son whom I love. I love Timothy. I love him. I'm proud of him. And I'm sending him to you because I love him and I, I believe that that love that he has is going to make a difference in your life as well. He goes on to say, uh, Timothy's faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus. Because remember, if, if you know the context of Paul's story, Paul wrote two-thirds or roughly two-thirds of the New Testament, but prior to putting pen on paper, prior to meeting Jesus, Paul was killing Christians. So you got to remember the, the, the context of, of this letter is very interesting. It's very delicate if you look at it, especially on Father's Day. This is a guy who had a past, who, who did a lot of things that I'm sure he wasn't proud of and probably could have been ridiculed for some of those decisions that he made. And a lot of people would have said, I don't know if he's even a great leader. Why should we even believe him? Why should we follow him? He says, listen, it's, it's, Timothy's coming to you to remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, not, not my way of life before Christ Jesus, because that was a mess, but my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere and in every church. I believe Paul's really dialing into something that uh, we should all, especially on this Father's Day, take, take to heart and really really take a step back and, and ask ourselves the question, you know, do, how, how are we handling the fact that maybe in our society today, we have many advisors. <laughs> we have many advisors. We have many people who are advising us through different means of communication, but do we have fathers? Do we have this kind of relationship that Paul had with Timothy? Do we have this kind of relationship with a spiritual father? Do we have this kind of relationship even with our own biological fathers or adopted fathers? What kind of relationship do we have? Because I think sometimes especially in the society that we live in. I read an article in Time Magazine this week that just said that the modern father uh, is under assault. The role of the modern father is under assault in America. It's gotten lost. People are wondering, what is the role of the father? I mean, and it, and it really broke down historically why, the, why these, this almost identity crisis with fathers has happened in our society today. It took it all the way back to the Great Depression. And it said, you know, the father was supposed to be the, the breadwinner, the provider of the family in those times. And because the world fell on hard times during the Great Depression and fathers couldn't provide, people lost faith in fathers. And then after that, it was, it was the boomers' generation and it was, uh, it was the baby boomers and there were kids and, and dads were, 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 were unfortunately spending a lot more time at work than they were with their kids. And that, that ended up becoming another crisis throughout history uh, that, that began to reshape the role of the father. And Time Magazine literally said that the modern day father uh, was shaped by, it has been completely reshaped since the 1900s. And I think about that. And I think about Paul's words and he, his encouragement to us to say, listen, I'm not, I'm not telling you this to shame you or, or I'm just telling, the, I'm telling you this to warn you because I believe that there's not many fathers. And he really dials into what the role of a father is even in that short passage 
right there that we just read. If you're new today, um, on our website, you can go right on your cell phone and open it up on your web browser, go to northrock.tv. If you click on message notes, you'll have notes to follow along with um, throughout the message today. I believe Paul, uh, I'm not saying this is a comprehensive list by any stretch of the imagination, but I, be, I believe Paul is trying to tell us a couple of things uh, when it comes down to the role of fathers in our society. And the fact that sometimes th this can get lost, the role of a father is, in, in this passage, he highlights four things to lead us, to protect us, to guide us, to love us. Will you say that with me on the count of three, one, two, three, to lead us, to protect us, to guide us, to love us. Paul's like, I, I want you to catch this. I'm not, I'm not telling you this to shame you. I'm not telling you this for any other reason. I'm telling you this to warn you that when it comes down to fathers and the relationship that you should be having with fathers in your life, the role of a father is simply this, to lead us, to protect us, to guide us, to love us. Like I said, I'm not saying that that's a comprehensive list, but there's something that Paul's trying to get at when he uses these words, not many fathers, not many fathers. Now, Father's Day weekend, I mean, if you're a father, you're sitting here and you're probably going, well, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I, we all have our own stories. We all have our own uh, interpretation of what our lives have been with our, with our kids, whether um, what, no matter what the situation is that the children that we raise, whether they were biological children, adopted children, whether they were um, the children that, that we raised through relationships with like boys and girls clubs or, or whatever the case might be, we know about these relationships, this fatherly relationship, but I think it's come under assault. I think it's important for us to understand, particularly as the church, is that this is not a new problem. Paul was highlighting something that happened from the very beginning in, in the creation story, and that was... Basically, from the very beginning, when God created Adam and then ultimately created Eve, as they were having relationship with God, there was a father problem. And the father problem was simply this, is that they had the perfect father. They had the perfect relationship with God, an unbroken, perfect relationship. And what happened is, because they were deceived and they got a little bit off track in their interpretation of what fathers were, and they got a little bit lost, like Paul is saying to the church in Corinth. Sometimes we get a little bit lost on this. They, they got sideways, and everything changed from there. Ultimately, we gave up perfection. We surrendered it for position. Because we wanted to be something in, in the grand scheme of our relationship with God. Guys and, and, and girls alike. Adam and Eve, they gave up perfection, they surrendered perfection for position. I want to be like God, I want to be like the Father, I want to sit in that seat. And, and God said ultimately, hey, that's not going to work out well for you, but if that's the choice that you want to make, you can make that choice. And we see that choice being made in Genesis 3, 5, here's where the deception came in, when the, when the, uh, when the serpent, when the enemy, when, when the devil deceived Adam and Eve. And it was simply this. God said, "Don't you here, you, you shouldn't touch this. It wouldn't be good for you to lead us, to protect us, to guide us, to love us, to lead us, to protect us, to guide us, to love us. You, you shouldn't touch this. It's not going to be good for you. And the serpent responds, well, for, for God knows that when you eat from from it, your eyes will be opened, <laughs> and you'll be like God. You'll get to sit in that seat that God sits in. You'll be like God, knowing good from evil. And I think ever since the very beginning, that's, what, that's been the assault on our culture. That's been the assault on our world to change God's original plan for what, what he designed fathers to be, to lead us, to protect us, to guide us, to love us. If you're ever looking for a great book, especially if you're a dad in the room, anything by John Eldridge <laughs> is fantastic because John Eldridge writes a book called Wild at Heart. And it, it talks a lot about how sometimes in, well, throughout history, we've kind of lost the identity to some degree of fathers. And, and what, what does it really mean to be a father? And on Father's Day, I think if, if you're looking for a, a good gift for your father, I'd encourage you to pick this book up. There's, there's another book he wrote called Knowing God as a Father. It's tremendous. It's a tremendous book. But with the warning 
that, that we were given by Paul, it goes on, the Bible goes on to say more about that, and I'll get to that in a second, but there's a quote from this book that I think is big for Father's Day weekend. It says this, if a man is ever to find out who he is and what he is here for, he has got to take the journey for himself. He's got to get his heart back. He's got to get his heart back. Because I think this is the assault Paul was trying to warn us about. This is the change in the world that we live in that Paul was trying to warn us about in the New Testament. But see, that warning came way before in the Old Testament. In fact, it was the last words. If you take your Bible in context and you split it in half, there's an Old Testament and there's a New Testament. And the Old Testament is an old covenant with God. It's God's way of saying, okay, this got broke at the beginning, so now where do we go from here? And that, and that Old Testament finishes off with a, with a book or a writing from, from a guy named Malachi. And Malachi was the last prophet prior to 400 years of complete silence from God. Like there was like time and time again throughout the Bible, there's writings, God speaking to mankind through prophets and different people. And Malachi was one of those, those prophets. But it was almost like for 400 years, God wanted to communicate something. I've told you everything I need to tell you, and I'm going to shut the lights off for about 400 years. And we're going to see if you guys get this, if this starts to make sense. And he reaches over and hits the light switch. But the last words right before he hits the light switch, church, listen to this. It's powerful. Listen. He's, saying, he's talking, Malachi is prophesying or essentially talking about the coming of Jesus. He's saying there's going to be someone who's going to come that's going to repair all of this brokenness, all of this brokenness between fathers and children and, and everything else. And he goes on to say, his preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Jesus will do this. Otherwise, I underlined that for you. Otherwise. If it doesn't happen, if we don't make it a priority, if we don't see this the way God intends us to see it, if we don't let the Father role be to lead us, protect us, guide us, and love us, if we don't hold on to that and embrace that, otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. Now, I'm not, I don't want to be heavy on Father's Day, but I want us to catch this because I think this is so big. Uh, I looked up some statistics on fatherless children this week, and, and, and they're alarming. And I'm sure there's nothing I'm going to tell you right now that's going to be um, a shock to you. But fatherless children are five times more likely to have mental health struggles, eight times more likely to go to prison, nine times more likely to drop out of high school, ten times more likely to abuse chemical substances. Fatherless homes produce 90% of the homeless and runaway children. In America. Fatherless homes pr uh, uh, produce 85% of all children with behavioral disorders. Fatherless homes produce 80% of all rapists. Fatherless homes produce 75% of all youth patients in chemical abuse centers. Fatherless homes produce 71% of teenage pregnancies, 71% of high school dropouts, 70% of juveniles in state correctional facilities, and 63% of youth suicides. Now, sometimes we have to take a step back as a culture and as a people, and we have to recognize what God has said, because I promise you the Bible proves to be true. Time and time again, we see the truth. And it makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck that, that those words were written by Malachi. But essentially, God inspired those words through Malachi. One is coming that will turn the hearts of fathers back to their children and the hearts of children back to their fathers. And if we don't embrace it, if we don't, if we don't allow him to do it, if we don't hold on to the teachings of Jesus and allow him to do it, there's going to be a curse coming. And I think about those statistics, and I think the curse is here. And that was written thousands of years ago. The last words from a prophet, and then God goes 400 years later before another word is uttered. And then on the scene comes Jesus. Do you think God was trying to send us a message? I think he was. I think he was trying to send us a very clear message about fathers and the importance of fathers and what it means to turn our hearts back 
to our children. So if you're a dad today, that's the, that's the question we're going to answer with our time left, is how do, you, how do we turn our hearts back? As fathers, how do, we, how do we get back to that place where our hearts are for our children? And as children, how do we get back to the place where our hearts are for fathers? I just got a couple things to share as we kind of wrap this up. The first thing is I think in our society today, we need to embrace the need to be fathered. We need to embrace it. Because if we're, if we're being honest, we're, this, this isn't something that we love because we've grown up with fathers that aren't perfect. And remember what happened at the beginning. We sacrificed, we surrendered perfection for position. See, we had the perfect father. It was God. And all of a sudden now, fatherhood wasn't about perfection. It wasn't about the image of God. It was about the position that someone held over us. And we didn't like that. We didn't like it with God and we didn't like it with our earthly fathers. So we started to, to really fight against this idea, this need to be fathered. But the Bible's clear in a lot of ways on, on, on why we need fathers. We need them in our lives. We, we need, desperately need this, this role of a father, which is so, so important to lead us, protect us, guide us, and love us. We need that in our lives, not, not just in our relationship with God, but in our relationships here on the earth. And that's why Paul is encouraging the church. Proverbs 13, 24 says, a refusal to correct for fathers, if fathers refuse to correct their kids or mothers refuse to correct their children, is a refusal to love. If we won't correct or love, you love your children by disciplining them. I think we've started to see that a little different in our society today. We've started to really have a difficult time understanding that there's a role that needs to be played. And I'm not saying that mothers don't contribute because they do. It's a team effort. But the fathers need to be leading. They need to be protecting and guiding and loving. And I know that sometimes that's what makes it difficult because maybe that correction came in your life and it wasn't in a loving way. Because your father wasn't perfect and he didn't have a good model to look after. Like Timothy had a good model to look after with Paul. But that's what we're trying to get to the root of today, to the heart, to return hearts back from fathers to children and from children to fathers. Proverbs 12.1, I love this translation. I've used this many times in church. Whoever loves discipline loves to learn, but whoever hates correction is a dumb animal. That's in the Bible. <laughs> Come on, that's awesome. One translation said, is, whoever hates correction is stupid. My kids are like, Dad, stupid's in the Bible? Yes. Come on, there's something here. We're all going to screw up. We're all going to mess up. Dads, I'm talking to you too. We need correction in our lives. We need fathers. Even if you are a father, you need a father like Paul and Timothy had that kind of relationship. You have many advisors, but not many fathers. You need these kind of people in your lives, the kind that will lead you, protect you, guide you, love you. Fathers, what's the role again? Here it is, four things. Lead us, protect us, guide us, love us. I'm not, again, I know there's more to it, but I'm telling you, that's the main themes. Lead us, protect us, guide us, love us. For me, one of the, one of the joys of being a pastor was the, the church planning organization that we went to. They said, um, when you start your church, what we, want you to, what we want you to understand and what we need you to do is we want you to find a group of people that can father you as a pastor. Because they, they said, you're going to need this. You're going to need these men in your life. And, and these men have become the joy of my life over the last two and a half years. The joy of my life. And sometimes the conversations are corrective. Sometimes they're sitting me down and saying, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, Jason. And sometimes they're, they're telling me, in, in great love, you're sideways. That's not, that is not the case. What you're saying right now is not the truth, and here's why. And they're helping me. They're correcting me. They're leading us as a church. These four men, they, they lead us, and they're pastors of other churches. And when I meet with them and I talk to them about you, I go out and tell them great things about you. And they help me lead this church. Not on my own, not on my own strength, because I'm good enough, because I'm not. Because on my best day, I'm, I'm, I'm average at best. But when I have other people around me that can support me, that can lead me, protect me, guide me, and love me, I become stronger. And that's why even dads, you need these men in your life. You need these people in your life. I, I mean, this is a text that came through at 536 this morning from one of our overseers. Go ahead and hit that next slide. 
I'm sorry, 529 a.m. Praying for you that God will use you in a powerful way. Edgerton, Ohio, Byron Adams sends me a text every Sunday morning. Every Sunday at 529 when he's getting up to pray, he's like, I'm praying for North Rock. I'm praying for you, Jason. I had to go seek that out. And a lot of times as, as, as dads particularly, that's hard for us as men to go seek that out and say, I need that in my life. Because we're, we're trained up and we're taught to say, no, no, I don't, I don't really need that. But remember what that, what that John Eldred's quote said, if you want to find out your purpose as a man on this planet, you've got to get your heart back. You've got to get your heart back. You've got to take a step back and say, I need those kind of people in my life. I want them in, and you've got to go find them. Make it a priority to meet with them. Because some of us, let's be honest, we haven't had a great experience with with our fathers up until now. So some of you, particularly men in this room, you might say, I didn't have a great example. And I don't really have somebody in my life, but I promise you when it comes down to the church, that was God's original design. That's what God wanted. He wanted people that would text you at 529 in the morning and tell you that they believe in you, that they love you, that they think you're awesome and that they're they're supporting you. Listen to these words in Psalm 68, 5 and 6. It says, God is a father to the fatherless. A defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. Around North Rock, we call those small groups. God sets the lonely in families, men and women, children too, teenagers going through difficulties, growing up in a world that has all of those things happening in it that we talked about earlier. God sets those people in families for a reason. Because we need this. We need people that will lead us, protect us, guide us, and love us. We need that. So we have to embrace this idea of being fathered. He leads out the prisoners with singing. That to me, when I, when I read this passage, there's so much hope That God can give me a family. God can give me other leaders if I seek it out, if I go look for it. I can be something better. We can can be something better together. If I make it a priority to go look for it and embrace this deep need to be father. The prisoners lead out with singing. Second thing I'll tell you is we have to stop fighting the old and start building the new. So much of our energy... When it comes down to this, this thing about being a father, it, it, it's, it's thinking about the past and some of the difficulties we've been through and the struggles that we've went through, and we all have a story. And there's always so much out there, especially when we've been fathered by, by fathers who aren't perfect and who aren't doing everything perfect because there's not a perfect person on this planet, never has been except Jesus. Jesus. And so many times we're trying to fight those old things. We're trying to hold on to or work through those old things. But I think sometimes if we really want to get to the core of this, if we want hearts of fathers to return to children and hearts of children to return to fathers, we've got to embrace this idea. We've got to stop fighting the old and start building the new. John Eldridge in his book says, Every boy in his journey to become a man takes an arrow in the center of his heart at the place of his strength, because the wound is rarely discussed. We rarely talk about these wounds. We don't, we don't want to talk about them. And even more rarely, rarely healed. Rarely discussed. Rarely healed. Every man carries a wound, and the wound is nearly always given by his father. There's so much truth to grab a hold of here. In your life, in my life, sometimes that's the struggle is when you know you're the leader, when you know you're the protector, when you know, when you know you're the person who's supposed to be guiding and loving and you're like, I know I'm not perfect and I know I don't have enough, oftentimes you, you feel guilty. Oftentimes you know you're not doing the best job that you can. You're trying, you're struggling so hard to make it work and you're trying to, 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 to do all of these things but you feel inadequate. And that's how we end up wounding and hurting each other, especially as men, especially as men. We, we, we wound and hurt each other because we're trying to keep up this, this facade that we've got this and we can do this. But meanwhile, we should all be humble enough to admit we don't have this and we can't do this without God. 
We absolutely need God. If hearts are going to return back to children and children's hearts are going to return back to fathers. John, 1 John 1, 1.9 in the Living Bible says this, but if you, we confess our sins to God, if we talk about our struggles, if we talk about the things inside of us that are broken, that are hurt, that are that, that, th- those wounds in us that are, that are rarely talked about and even, even more rarely healed, if we confess those things to God, he will keep his promise and do what is right. He will forgive us our sins and purify us of all wrongdoing. That's the first step, though. That's the first step. Fathers in the room, men, past, present, and future fathers. The first step is admitting, I, I, I'm, I'm not perfect, and I don't do this right. This is a heavy load to carry. Lead us, protect us, guide us, love us. Lead us, protect us, guide us, love us. Families, lead us, protect us, guide us, love us. Man, it's such a heavy load to carry. I'm trying. I, I want to do a good job, but I, I've got my own stuff, and it's deep inside. I know. I do, too. And the manliest thing you can do is admit that you're not perfect. And talk about those things. Confess those things to God, and he'll keep his promise because he's the perfect father. He'll keep his promises to you and to me. And he'll forgive us of our sins and he'll purify us from wrongdoing. But make no mistake, the healing doesn't come there. The forgiveness comes there. The healing comes here. James 5.16, admit your faults. Well, I already did. I, I, I admitted my faults, right? I already talked about that stuff. You know, we're dudes. We don't, we don't talk about it too much, right? We don't want to get all like teary or, you know. No, no, no. Admit your faults. Well, I already did. I talked to God about it. No, no, no. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible actually says if you want healing, if you want forgiveness, you, you admit your faults to God. God, I'm not. And you are, and I need you. If you want healing in your relationships with your wives and your children and other men in your life, and you want healing in your families, and you want hearts to return back, children to father and father to children, you admit your faults to one another, and you pray for each other. Why? So that you may be healed. God wants to bring healing. He wants this thing to work, and he wants it to work well. He created you for something that's extraordinary, and he knows that you need him to do a great job being a dad, to being a father. He knows that you need him, and he's he's calling you back to him and saying, confess confess those things. Admit what you struggle with to me, and I'll forgive you for those things. I'll purify that, but, but hey, confess those things. Talk about those things. Bring those things out with the people that you love the most, and then pray with each other in order to create healing. Earnest prayer, the earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and wonderful results. I I said it earlier, that's why we do small groups, and I'll throw a plug in. July 14th to August 19th, we're doing summer small groups. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're you're a guy, girl, kid, teenager, college student, if you don't have somebody that you can talk to the, uh, about these things, if you don't have some people that, are, that, you, that, you, that you feel safe around, that you can say, hey, I need to admit I'm not perfect. And I need to be able to share where I'm not perfect and confess those things to God, but I also need to be able to admit those to some other per- people around me. They care about me and love me and will pray for me. And when they do, that's when the healing comes. Six weeks in the summer, we know people travel, but we're like, hey, people are like, what do you want, what do you want us to do in small groups? You got curriculum? No, we just want you to get together. <laughs> it's six weeks. What we'd love to see you do, we'll have all the information in the, in the coming weeks. It'll kick off with Serve Day on July 14th. In the coming weeks, we're going to launch small groups, and we've launched over 100 small groups at this church, and we've seen what God can do through this. So my encouragement to you is to mark your calendars for this six-week season. Even if you can only make three weeks, show up on someone's back porch at this church. And admit, confess, pray for each other. Stick together on this journey because we need this. I got a video I want you to watch today. So, so many times it's hard for us to, to say these things and to talk about these things. But this video, when I saw it this week, it really hit me. Right in the feels. <laughs> so uh, 
I don't know, I hope it inspires you the way that it inspired me this week. Check this out. This is slightly intimidating. <laughs> Dad, what about me makes you proud? Oh, man. Um... Dad, what about me makes you proud? Dad, what about me makes you proud? <laughs> Dad, what about me makes you proud? Can I have to answer that one? Yes. yes. Just about everything that you do. You're loving. You're funny. If I could go on and on. <laughs> what makes me proud about you is you just being yourself. I had trouble with alcohol. It was actually an intervention. Even with all the other people there, you were the, the real reason that I made the decision to go into the treatment center that I did. And uh, thank you. Thank you. You're helpful. Oh, you forgot the funny part. <laughs> Your attention to uh, hygiene. <laughs> Dad, I am grateful to you for choosing to stay when I was little. Mm -hmm. Um, why am I crying? <laughs> At the time when I'm graduating and I'm packing up and leaving, then it's really gonna hit me. And I think about a time when if you're not around, like that would be awful. <laughs> but like you're the you're the person that would always laugh. Dad, I'm grateful because we didn't know how long you were gonna be with us, so we're so happy that you're still here. Dad. I'm proud of you for knowing that the most important thing was to just give your kids so much time. I've always been impressed by you. You made it easy. Thanks. I miss having a chance to just check in with you. I miss your sketchbooks. I love you. I love you too. You got it. We don't say it enough. Mm. Hey. <laughs> I love you, Dad doesn't compute until they're gone. <laughs> so tell them now. We make so much out of so many things. But sometimes it's just time to stop fighting the old and start building the new. And it just starts with words <laughs> that come straight from the heart. Last thing I'll leave you with today. Embrace the need to be fathered. Stop fighting the old. Start building the new. And the last thing I'll close out with, be fathered by God first. Be fathered by God first. That's for kids and dads, both. Jesus said this. He, he talked to a group of his closest friends one time. They saw him pray to God, and they're like, we want to pray like that. <laughs> we want to have that kind of relationship with our father. And, and he said, we... Let me tell you what the issue is. You're addressing God all wrong. You're addressing God with this majesty and all, which is amazing. But he's, he said, listen, this, this is how you should pray. Start your prayers like this. Our Father in heaven. <laughs> Our Father in heaven. God, you're my Father. You're my heavenly Father. You're the perfect Father. And I know sometimes I break this relationship with you but your name needs to be kept holy. Lead us. Protect us. Guide us. Love us. Lead us, protect us, guide us, love us. Your name as Father needs to be kept holy. John Eldridge said this in his book, Wild at Heart. He said, this is the, this is the greatest adventure for all of us as men. You are the son of a kind strong, engaged father. And you might be stopping right there and going, wait a second, I don't, that's not the father I grew up with. Stop, 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 stop. Be fathered by God first. You are the son or daughter of a kind, strong, engaged father. A father wise enough to guide you in the way, generous enough to provide for your journey, offering to walk with you every step. This is perhaps the hardest thing. For us to believe. 
really believe deep down in our hearts so that it changes us forever. It changes the way that we approach each and every day. I've talked to you guys many times about my dad, and Father's Day is always tough for me just because my... My dad went to be with the Lord about five years ago. And I remember on this day, this guy. This was the guy who wasn't being fathered by God. This was the guy that I had some bad stretches with. And sometimes my rebellious heart and my desire to not want to be fathered made it hard on him, made it tough. And I'm sure he was doing the best that he could do. But I'll never forget the change that happened in my dad when a youth pastor took him fishing (laughs) and he gave his life to Christ. And like Paul said, imitate me, not in my former life. Imitate me in my life in Christ. Because I'm telling you, this guy right here completely turned everything around. As tough as things were early on, as as many bad decisions were made, as sometimes I'm sure he probably felt like a failure, like he he was doing the best he could. Maybe he wasn't perfect. And as a kid, I was probably pretty hard on him about that. But when Jesus came in and got a hold of his heart, everything changed. I watched humility rise in my father. I watched him apologize to my family and tell my mother he was sorry for being a bad husband to her and not caring for her. And look me in the eye as his son and saying, son, I, am, I owe you an apology for not leading, protecting, guiding, and loving you. And when you see that, the healing that came in that and the, and the celebration of the fact that my dad is with, with Jesus on Father's Day, is a, it's a day that I celebrate. It's a day that I rejoice in our relationship, even though it had hard times. And I, to this day, I, I swear I stand here one, just a, a testimony to what? Malachi said at the end of the Old Testament that there's one coming who will turn the hearts of fathers back to their children and the hearts of children back to their fathers. And it's all Jesus. Make no mistake, men. It's all Jesus. I'll leave you with this passage, James 1, 17 and 18. Whatever is good, and perfect (laughs) not me if you see anything good or perfect that I do it's a gift coming down to us from God our father who created all the lights in the heavens he never changes or casts a, a shifting shadow he never changes he's not mad at you one day he doesn't handle the situation wrong one day he handles it perfectly every time and he chose to give birth to us by giving us His true word, Jesus. And we, out of all creation, (laughs) I love this part, have become his prized possessions. That's you. Men, that's you. Women, that's you. Students, children, that's you today. You are the prized possession of a heavenly father who loves you more than you could ever ask, imagine, or dream. Would you bow your heads with me as we close today? For some of you today, I I believe God wants to do something in your heart right now in this moment. And I think it's something very special. He wants to rekindle a relationship with Father, with God as your heavenly Father. And the Bible says it's very simple. It's, It's not complicated at all. It starts by just admitting that you haven't done everything right and you really haven't managed the relationship with God correctly and it's just saying hey I've done things wrong and the Bible says when we confess that and we we receive what Jesus did on the cross by giving his life for our sin that in that moment our relationship with God is restored and we have a restored renewed relationship with God our Father if that's you today and you're ready to begin a journey Come on, dads, I'm talking to you too, right here in this moment. If you want to lead better, protect better, guide better, and love better, 
It all starts with this relationship with God right now. If that's you, I'll lead you in a prayer right there where you're at. Just say, God, I need you. I don't have this figured out. But I want to step into this calling to be a father. I want to step into this calling to be a leader today. So I give you my heart and my life today, and I thank you for what Jesus did on the cross for me. I surrender my heart to you. Come and be Lord of my life from this day forward. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jason. If you prayed that prayer, you said, you know what? I need a father. I need a father who's going to take care of me, not just here. What happens when I die for all of eternity? What a father we have. If you made that commitment today, we just want to ask that you check the box on that welcome card with your information. Put it in the giving station on your way out because we want to get the right tools into your hands to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. That's what we're all about here. We do a thing called a uh, version where we're all in the Bible every single day during the week together. Our reading plan for this week is, check it out, reading plan for this week. Next slide is Abba, dancing queen. Not that one, okay? Totally different Abba. This is actually the word for our Father, God in heaven. Everything of what Jason talked about. I'm really excited to roll this one out this week. It's going to be great. We're going to do a talk it over on the North Rock Facebook pages. Go there Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And Jason will unpack a little bit more of what we talked about today. If you need prayer for anything, you can go right out, uh, meet one of our um, people in the, in the prayer section to the soft seating ironically next to the putt putt <laughs> and we would love to pray for anything that you need and if that's if you're like yeah but you still have something you want prayer for write it on the back of that connect card turn that in the last thing that we do is ask you know that you you keep it between you and god but the way to support us here and what we do and everything that we do we have three ways in person with an envelope in the giving kiosk mobile or you can text to our, or get on our website right there and give in that way. Uh, those are just ways. Like we said, you know, our gift to you as we leave here is, uh, you know, Papa Palooza out there. And, uh, you know, we got hot dogs, we got chips, we got prizes. Huge props this week to Sarah and David Russell, Angela and Brett Heflin, among some of our other leaders that put so much work into making this thing happen. We want you guys to go out there. We want you guys to enjoy yourselves. All the food is ready. All of you can grab whatever you want to get out there. But that's our gift to you. See, that's why we do that. We don't ask you to give when we don't give things back. So have a wonderful Father's Day. Uh, do not melt out there. It's really, really hot today. We love you guys. Have a great day.